Do you know that saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? There's another one that says, a story is worth a thousand pictures. How impactful is it when you can bring a story into your conversations with people? It is absolutely the way to uplevel your influence and frankly, your income in your sales conversations, whether you're talking to prospects or whether you're talking to existing clients. You are invited to the upcoming masterclass, Storytelling for Business. It's happening April 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. Now in this workshop, you are going to get the framework for crafting your stories. You're going to learn which stories you need to be ready to tell. And in the workbook, you are going to have an opportunity to really kind of suss out your own stories. You might not think you have stories to tell yet, or maybe you're not sure which stories to tell when, but you're going to know that by the end of the three weeks, you're going to have a workbook packed full of notes and stories for you to bring into your conversations. We would love to have you come be with us. And here's a special link that's going to save you, my podcast listeners, $200 off the registration when you go and register right now, yoursalesmaven.com forward slash storytelling. So registration is only open for a couple weeks. So go and register right now at yoursalesmaven.com forward slash storytelling. We would love to have you in there with us. I'll see you soon. Are you ready to boost your confidence when selling so you're able to close more deals? Nikki Rausch will show you how to build a foundation of skills and a mindset that creates sales success without feeling pushy or salesy and without fear of rejection. She is a sales strategist and coach with more than 25 years of sales experience and is master certified in neuro-linguistic programming. This is a radically different approach to selling. It's a no sleaze, no slime, and no stress approach to building your business. This is Sales Maven. Here's Nikki. Welcome, and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Roush, your own personal sales maven, here to offer you tips, techniques, and strategies to master your sales conversations. Today's episode is a sales success story with our very own Sales Maven Society member, Jill Schroyer. Welcome to the show, friend. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you here. Now, you have been on the show before. We did an on-air coaching call with you quite a few months ago. And I'm so happy to bring you back. And in case anybody hasn't listened to that episode or it's you know slipped their mind since they listened, tell us a little bit about you and your business. Thank you. So as you mentioned, I'm Jill Schroyer with Expedition HR, and we guide women business owners with building an HR foundation. We also provide ongoing expert HR support. So in a nutshell, they can spend less time dealing with what we call sticky situations and more time running and growing their business. And we do this through our Jumpstart programs, as well as our guiding HR subscription. Tell me about your Jumpstart program and the subscription program. What's the what's the difference in that? And also, what size businesses are you tend do you tend to work with? Like, when do people really need you and what you offer for HR support? Perfect. Thanks for asking that question. So we the Jumpstart programs. There's two options. There's what we call our signature program, and that goes over eight weeks, touching on our eight foundational HR pillars. And new this year, we've implemented a what we call mini Jumpstart, which is for businesses under 15 employees. Whereas the signature program is catered more to businesses above 15. And that's because of certain federal laws, which take effect at 15 employees. So it's kind of a line in the sand where there's a lot more to that you need to be aware of when you reach 15 W-2 employees. We're not talking about contractors. Okay. Um, so we, we bundle the Jumpstart with the subscription, mainly because we give the education in the Jumpstart program and the subscription provides provides the ongoing support. And so they pair really nicely together because the education, while it can set someone up with, we say, HR generalist level knowledge, 
they really do need ongoing support to when other issues come up. You know, when a sticky situation arises, we're doing everything we can to educate in order to prevent them. But when those situations arise, it's not something even an HR generalist would typically know how to handle. So that's the beauty of the ongoing portion is, oh my gosh, I've got maybe a harassment case or a discrimination or even just two employees are fighting or you need to let someone go and you have all your education, your resources, but you need your hand held through this extra sticky situation, as we say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So is somebody who has a business that has 15 employees, do they tend to have somebody designated to HR specifically? Like, have they brought in a human resources, I don't know, like executive or, or is that you're kind of helping with that? Or tell me a little bit more about that. Sure. So at 15 employees, uh, typically they don't have someone designated to HR. Now I say that sometimes it's an office administrator that handles HR or an Mm -hmm. HR admin or the CEO. I have some clients that are just a few employees. And so the CEO really gets tasked with learning all the, you know, the education pieces we teach. Um, Really until you reach 30 plus employees, and then depending on your industry and what kind of business it is, um, that's really when you may want to consider having someone dedicated to HR. Um, I work with businesses up to 100 because up to 100, you can typically get away with one HR person or one HR administrator. A lot of my clients are like 70 to 90 employees Mm -hmm. and they have this administrator who I actually helped them hire. And then I trained them through the Jumpstart program. And now we're just ongoing year after year supporting them. And it's so cool to see their knowledge increasing every year with the questions they ask. And does that answer your question, Nikki? Yeah, that's totally exactly what I had in mind. And also I'm thinking about a lot of the comp, you know, I come from a corporate background. So a lot of the companies that I worked for, like we might have had somebody in HR, but usually there's just one person. So I could see that there would be such a huge advantage of having somebody like you who's an expert that that person could turn to and have, you know, confidential, you know, conversations and get support and feedback and also like regulations and you know making sure that you're staying within the guidelines and the the rules the laws all of that kind of stuff so it's a real advantage to what you're offering so love that you also have written a book yes <laughs> tell us your book what's your book's name Thank you so much for asking I'm so proud of it it's called Conquer Sticky Situations and The idea came up of these years in HR, I was always asked to handle these stickiest situations, as I say, like from the CEO to the, you know, the executives that all come to me and say, hey, Jill, we've got a really sticky one. And so in a nutshell, I I put that into the book, my what I call my five step formula for handling sticky situations. And I just love I, I lean really into those type of situations because I believe we can do it in a way that keeps everyone feeling not not so much good, but not, but feeling like remembering the human side and making people um, realize this isn't personal. And so I, I kind of put that into the book and I hope it's helping not only HR people, but also just anyone dealing with life and those sticky situations that come up. And the next one's going to be preventing sticky situations and kind of talking (laughs) through some of my techniques, but I just couldn't, it was bubbling up inside of me to talk about this formula for handling those situations. Awesome. Awesome. And the book's available on Amazon and anywhere else, or is it pretty much anywhere you can get a book, you can find your book? Yes. uh, Amazon primarily, and then um, Barnes and Noble online and Mm -hmm. and various other retailers. I think it's at Walmart too, but um, you might have to special order it. Okay. Awesome. Well, so fun to learn this about... I mean, I feel like I know this about about you, but hopefully for the audience to learn and what it means to have somebody like you out there and know that there's somebody like you out there. I don't know if people in companies know that there are resources like you available and how awesome that they can reach out and get in touch with you to support them. So we want to talk about some of your successes. You have something in particular that um, you're really rocking it. I will say, 
So for the listener, Jill is one of our most active members in the Sales Maven Society. We love her. She has great questions. She is the most... You are so loving and supportive of the other members. And I'm just so happy to have you in the group. And you are an excellent implementer because you ask me great questions and then you go and you implement and then you can come back and share results. And um, I'm just, I so appreciate that about you. So tell us a little bit about some of your success. And one thing in particular, I know you're having a ton of success with. Great. I couldn't wait to share this because I think it'll help so many people. And if they're not focusing on the learnings in Sales Maven Society, they should, is pre-framing. (laughs) Pre-framing. I feel like I should have it tattooed across my forehead because I talk about it so much. Pre-frame, it's so, so important. So keep going. Sorry, I'm I'm like cheering for you here. (laughs) No, that's great. You're the expert on it. Um, What I wanted to share though is you've... You know, I, I guess I always thought to a point that I did preframe or used some other term when I talked with clients and discovery calls, but I really wasn't doing it to the level that I should and could be. And so mm-hmm. I've implemented that in discovery calls and it not only like keeps the conversation on track, but it keeps it to the time I've specified, which has been so like enlightening for me because we all know what to expect. We all know where we're at in the call. Um and so that in, in clients love it. I can just tell from the way they react that they're impressed. And I've also implemented it in my jumpstart sessions. I'm thinking, okay, Nikki always talks about pre-framing. Why shouldn't I do that here as well? And mm-hmm. they love it. And they, they've even said before, like, we love how you talk about what we're going to learn. You ask, how does that sound? Um, so I guess even like folding in the question piece of it is... Mm-hmm really pausing to say, okay, you know, I'm going to pre-frame the call and then stopping and saying, so how does that sound? Does that sound like a good plan? And I I wouldn't really do that before. I would kind of just like steamroll on through. And I always hear your voice in my head saying, ask a question, ask a question. So (laughs) I love that my voice is in your head and I I apologize (laughs) for that. (laughs) Okay, so uh, in case you're hearing about preframing for the first time, the objective of, of a preframe is to really create safety and build rapport with the person or the people that you're in conversation with. So it's really important in how you start a conversation that you have a prepared preframe. So an example of a preframe, and I don't know, Jill, if you want to share one of yours, but here's typically what I would say about a preframe is you would say, you know, thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. The objective of the call is to learn more about each other and see if there's some opportunity for us to work together. We're scheduled to chat for about you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour, whatever that is. So say what the time is. Does that still work for you? And then you wait. So you asked a question and you let them answer. So you don't just keep talking. You pause and you wait. And then you say, now, in order to make this meaningful and productive, is it okay if I start with a couple quick questions? That's kind of the pre-frame for a discovery call. Now you're you're saying you're using it, which makes me so happy that you're using it at the start of your trainings. Will you tell us a little bit about like how would you set that up? Sure. Um, so I and it's funny, I brought up some notes to make kind of outline all the pieces, and I have it, I call it Nikki's pre-frame <laughs> <laughs> in my training sessions. Um, and I I didn't do this before Sales Maven with even the jump starts or discovery calls, but I start with telling them what we're going to cover today, how Mm -hmm. much time we have set aside, and that I'll be checking in along the way for questions. But if it's not pressing, if we can wait to the end to make sure we get through the training material, and then I make sure I remind them of kind of like, I call them housekeeping items that they Mm -hmm. can always set follow-up time with the jump start. They get a lot of like as needed support whenever. And um, and then I tell them I'm going to walk through each piece and I kind of outline the key pieces of the module. And I tell them how to use the workbook as we're going through and that they, uh, something else I got from you, Nikki, was, um, you know, really hitting home the implementation items when I do the trainings. Like I, I would talk about them, but I really like isolated them and I talk about them in the pre-frame and say, remember at the end, Um, And I created a workbook too. Um, use the same company you use. I love them and uh, tell them like exactly what to do. So it's, they love it. And 
rarely do they have questions because they're like, sounds great, you know, sounds good. And yeah. Yeah. The idea is always to make it so easy for the person that you're in conversation with or the person that's in your training to feel at ease. Because if they are, if they've got a lot of internal dialogue, like, oh, I don't know what Jill's going to cover, or I don't know how long this is going to take, or should I have been prepared for this or that? They're all up in their head and they can't actually take in what the content is that you're sharing. So by pre-framing, it's that way of really calming, like smoothing the waters and letting people go, okay, I can breathe, I can relax, and I can give Jill my full attention. So I am so excited for you that you've brought pre-frame into other areas of your business and that you're seeing that that's really supporting your clients in getting the success that they're going to get out of going through your trainings and being a part of your group. That makes me so happy. Well, I love Nikki. One, I just learned something <laughs> that okay. you just went through. You said another benefit is that they might have all these things in their head that they're worried about or want to ask. And you know, I always thought, set the stage, make sure they know what to expect. But you saying that kind of made me think you actually can probably answer a lot of questions by pre-framing as well, mm -hmm. which saves time, yes. which I love, especially in discovery calls. I find it's ultra effective there because I would just get, I mean, I would have discovery calls for like almost two hours before because we just didn't have a good format. So yeah. And I think like you say, they, <laughs> there's so much to say about the questions, but they, um, they worry going into my jump starts that they're not going to like get what they need addressed mm -hmm. answered. And I tell them right up, you will hear about this, 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 and this. So hang tight. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Anytime you're spending more than about 30 minutes on a discovery call, it's probably time for us to have a conversation. <laughs> if you say, anytime somebody says to me, I, I, I could be on a discovery call for two hours. The sales coach in me goes like, <gasps> like it catches oh. my breath and makes me go, wait a minute. <laughs> and yes, pre-framing will help you stay on track because you're setting the stage and you're taking control of the conversation, but doing it in a really kind way. You know, I'm all about, I think, sales through kindness. <laughs> and so being able to take control of that call, doing it in a kind way, putting the person at ease. Now we can have a really effective conversation and we don't need two hours of building rapport and telling stories back and forth and all the stuff that can kind of get you in the weeds on that call. And frankly, can oftentimes keep people from actually moving forward with you because now they're going to walk away either feeling like, I got so much out of that call. I don't need to hire Jill. Or I spent so much time with her and I'm still not really sure what to do next. Neither of those are a good place to leave somebody. Yes. And you mentioned putting people in a place where they feel safe. Like the whole premise of everything I teach is, you know, in the, in the workplace, we, we teach employers how to, you know, recruit the right way and how to speak to candidates the right way, because you want to make them feel safe mm -hmm. before they even start working for you. And if they feel safe in the process, they're going to feel safe when they work for you. And then if you care for them while they're working for you, they're going to feel safe and then they feel engaged. So I love that you folded that in to like the discovery calls because this is big and scary. I know when I reach out to someone to perhaps start like a costly project or whatever the case, it's scary. And if mm -hmm. I don't feel safe, I'm scared to give them my money. And so I feel like safety is such a, like something that relates to all of this. My NLP teacher used to tell a story about how her, her dad was in charge of safety where he worked. And so he had the hard hat and as he would leave in the morning, he would always say, remember, safety first. And that has stuck in my brain for so many years because she used to tell this story a lot. Uh, when I was assisting her, I would hear her tell this story to all the new groups constantly, safety first, safety first. So I think about this in, in all of my sales conversations. I think about this when I go into the Sales Maven Society, like, am I creating safety. That's the most important thing. And frankly, you know, sometimes I miss the I miss the mark and make mistakes. And yet, when you have created some safety for people, they're willing to give you a little bit of grace and go like, "Oh, I felt a little pinched by this thing that Nikki said or did, but I'll give her a little bit of grace here and make sure like I'll give her another chance to create safety with me." 
So I think safety is one of those things. Like it's, it's like a foundation piece of selling and being successful at sales is to create safety with the people you're in conversation with and know that you have to continue to create safety even after you've earned their business in order for you to continue on with them, have them be repeat clients. Safety is so important. Yes, goes hand in hand with trust too. Mm-hmm. They're all interwoven for yeah. sure. Well, in, in dealing with like what I call sticky situations, you know, if, if, if I don't tell them like, okay, here's where we're at and give them that overview, that pre-frame, again, it folds into those conversations. Mm-hmm it makes them kind of get it get in in a place of ease before we start diving into the action steps because there's a lot of again stress around it so it it just comes into so much even my personal life nikki i even find i pre-frame when someone asks me about something that we want to talk through and i think oh we only have a few minutes we're out on a walk or something and i like to say here's what i want to make sure i answer for you or that we talk about and i just love it i'm kind of obsessed with (laughs) pre-framing That makes me really happy. It's one of those things like I don't think it can ever go wrong. Now I shouldn't say ever because that's a qualifying like generalization, but or what's known as a universal qualifier. But at the same time, I think pre-framing is going to serve you 99% of the time in just about any situation. When you're having uncomfortable conversations, when you're having really important conversations, when you want to build safety with anybody, I think it's really important. So thank you for coming on the show and sharing about your success with it. Is there anything we haven't talked about yet that you want to make sure that we talk about? Well, maybe to add, when I mentioned pre-framing, it's been so helpful in discovery calls because I'm a reformed two-hour discovery call business owner to within 30 minutes. But so many of the things that I learn in Sales Maven Society translate out like exponentially into the business. Um, I can't can't think of a one off the top of my head, but everything I learn, there's always some other application. So I always encourage others when you learn something, really think like, how else can I apply this in my business? Because I, I always say, you know, I know you're a sales coach. To me, you're sales and business coach because you've helped grow my business even when I'm not talking to prospects and you've helped me refine things because these things you teach are just, they're almost like life skills and they're throughout the business skills. So. Oh, thank you for saying that. I, I think a lot, I'm always really honored when somebody will say, you taught me this thing and I used it in this other area of my life or other area of my business. Those are some of my prouder moments because I feel like, okay, this will be a skill that will continue to serve you in multiple areas. And then that feels like a huge value. So that's so reaffirming to me. So thank you for saying that. Okay. So as we wrap up today, I was like to end with two questions, which is the first one, what's one benefit that you've received from being in the Sales Maven Society? I feel like we've talked about this, but I'm interested to hear if you have anything else to say about it. Yes. Well, I remember when I was on before, I mentioned the quality of people, which is awesome. But what I was thinking of for this question beforehand is kind of to elaborate on that is the networking that I've done. I just today alone, I have two calls with others from the group and we're collaborating, we're moving business to each other and referring each other and um so I, I feel like it's it's an incredible place to network and build relationships. Yeah, I can I can name probably seven people right away who I've talked with recently and built connections with, and and they're they're like real solid connections. They're mm-hmm. they're not just oh I hope this person ends up being someone that I can relate to or send business to. They're, every single one of them has developed into some sort of great relationship. That makes me so happy. There's a reason that I named it society because it really is a place of community. And you're such a good contributor in that way. I know we did a, um, we just ended, uh, uh, we're, Jill and I are recording this kind of mid March. And we last month in the Sales Maven Society, we did um, member appreciation. And there was a question where we asked, um, you know, tag somebody that you have connected with or done business with in the Sales Maven Society. And I will say, Melissa, who was in charge of the, the whole member appreciation, who's my assistant, we were blown away 
by the responses. I don't know if you remember this, but I know you were one of the people who answered. We were blown away by the amount of people that each person had to call out. Like it wasn't like we thought, oh, people would say like, oh, I've connected with Bonnie or, you know, oh, I work with, you know, whoever. But it was like, I work with Jill. I work with, you know, I work with Julie. I work with Tracy. I work with Melanie. I work with, and that, and it just kept going and kept going and kept going. And we were like, wow, this was so amazing. Do you remember that post? Yes. It made my I heart felt so the happy. same way. I saw just so many kind of come through. And then I, then I even, I reached out to someone that someone else named because I thought, Ooh, they connected with them. That sounds like someone I'd like to connect with. And I reached out to them. (laughs) That makes me even happier. I love it. You guys are so, they're so wonderful. If you're not in the Sales Movement Society yet, come join us because this group is amazing. Okay. Now I have been talking about that um, 2022 for me is the year of connection. And because we have Jill here, she is my connection that I want to share with you guys today. So my last question for you, Jill, is how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way? Great. Well, I've found I've been spending most of my time on Instagram and will be spending more time on LinkedIn. So Expedition HR on Instagram, and you can look me up by Jill Schroyer on LinkedIn. I also have a company page, but I usually focus on my personal page. Okay. So go connect with her and or go get her book. Say your book name again. Conquer Sticky Situations. That's right. So go get the book, connect with Jill. She's amazing. And come join us in the Sales Maven Society. If you're not in there yet, you can join by going to salesmavensociety.com. If you enter coupon code 47 trial, it'll take $100 off your first month of membership. And you can hang out with these really amazing people in there, connect, build, uh, build a network, build some business, and hopefully learn some things from me too. So we'd love to have you there. Thank you, Jill, so much for being with us today and sharing your story. Thank you, Nikki. Always a pleasure. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Have a great rest of the day and we'll be back soon. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Do you know that saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? There's another one that says a story is worth a thousand pictures. How impactful is it when you can bring a story into your conversations with people? It is absolutely the way to uplevel your influence and frankly, your income in your sales conversations, whether you're talking to prospects or whether you're talking to existing clients. You are invited to the upcoming masterclass, Storytelling for Business. It's happening April 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. Now in this workshop, you are going to get the framework for crafting your stories. You're going to learn which stories you need to be ready to tell. And in the workbook, you are going to have an opportunity to really kind of suss out your own stories. You might not think you have stories to tell yet, or maybe you're not sure which stories to tell when, but you're going to know that by the end of the three weeks, you're going to have a workbook packed full of notes and stories for you to bring into your conversations. We would love to have you come be with us. And here's a special link that's going to save you, my podcast listeners, $200 off the registration when you go and register right now, yoursalesmaven.com forward slash storytelling. So registration is only open for a couple weeks. So go and register right now at yoursalesmaven.com forward slash storytelling. We would love to have you in there with us. I'll see you soon.